What is up, Need for Speed Racers? It is I, your wheel man, Alex Cornut. We're here today with the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. It's got 22 more syllables than a BMW M3, but that does not make it faster. <laughs> Fan requested, you guys asked for it, so I'm bringing it to you. I've got it in A+, and S-Class. It's low end of the mid-tier in both of those classes. You're not going to be setting any records with this car, but you can go out and pub stomp and have no problems in it. It does fine. I've got some gameplay footage at the end of this so you can see the car go cruising around. I've got a really pretty solid turn on power that I want to show you. I end up cutting through the pavement, narrowly avoiding a car, and jumping a little bit. It's pretty smooth. That being said, I'm not in love with this machine. It, that's why I've never done a build video on it, because it's underwhelming. Uh, stats look good, but that's kind of all it does is look good. But it's all good. I'm here for you, and this is what you guys asked for. Viewer request means you guys voted for it, and I brought it to you. The way this works, drop a comment down below. Whatever comment gets the most likes will be the car that I build next. This one, at the time of me building it, was one like ahead of the Pontiac Firebird, so I defaulted to this. But I checked again today, and the Firebird actually had some more likes. So I might do that next, but I reset the counter on every uh, build video. So whatever comment on this video gets the most likes will be the next one. Low key, I feel like it's the Firebird. You guys don't want it. <laughs> it's not good, but I'm here for you. So we'll figure it out. Why are you down there? dropping a comment and liking other comments. Guys, the rules, if you're gonna leave a comment on what you wanna see, you have to like someone else's comment as well, so that way we're spreading the love around. It helps everybody out. And while we're down there, why don't you go ahead and give the video a like as well. I would appreciate it. Let's dig into it. Let me bring you the A class, or A plus class first. For the engine that you are running in the A plus, Julia, it is the all the way to the left, Sport Bronze 2.9 liter V6. 505 brake horsepower when we start. For the parts, I am running Sport Bronze Induction. Sport Bronze ECU. Super Gold Fuel System. Sport Bronze Exhaust. I'm running the Elite Platinum Su Roots Supercharger. Sport Bronze Nitrous. Elite Platinum Road Suspension. Silver Pro Brakes, Elite Platinum Grip Tires, Silver Pro Clutch, Sport Bronze 5 Speed Transmission, and then I run the Elite Platinum Differential. You need it in there you guys because we're going to crank it as far to the left as we can reasonably. We have to scale it back one to make it all fit. And then for my auxiliaries I always run Nitrous Drift, Nitrous Grip, with the exception of that one rumble track where I run jump. For the handling, you're gonna do a 75% grip build on this one. It doesn't fit at 80. I tried every parts combination running the super that I could to get it to be 80% grip, and it doesn't fit. If you wanna run, uh, let me finish this build and then I'll show you a couple of the little tweaks you can make. Maybe try those. So 75% grip, steering sensitivity, I'm two clicks high, that's what I like. Downforce, run it all the way high. That's where I like it in this car. You can't run it anywhere else with this configuration. You've got to have it all the way high. Traction control is off. Drift entry is brake tap. That is going to give you the A plus 269 Alfa Romeo. 172 top speed. It does it. Let me go back into this. And then the horsepower is 631. Max torque 548. If you are stuck on wanting to run 80% grip, you can go down your handling, run it up to 80%, you can actually take a little bit out of your downforce, and then go over to your parts, and instead of the supercharger, you can run the twin turbos, and that'll give you a 269 as well. But switching to the 20s, you are actually losing a, just one horsepower and just about six foot-pounds of torque. Um, there wasn't really a huge discernible difference between the two. I preferred the roots. I felt like it just had a little more grunt on the bottom end, but really, um, we're kind of splitting hairs there. But when it's between the two, if I can fit the roots, I usually do that first. Um, 
So either way, if you guys want to go with the twins or the roots, Nil built it with the twin turbos, and then I kind of forced the roots in there with the 75% grip uh, just to try it. And then after doing a couple of races with it, I liked it a little better. It just felt like it was a little more planted coming out of the corners, but I mean, we're splitting hairs. It's really not that big of a deal. I would say most of you guys won't notice. Um, overall, the car is okay. Gameplay footage at the end, nothing special, but the wrap is really cool. We got this Corn Nut Crew wrap. Some of the guys uh, in the crew did this, and so a big shout out to those guys. I mean, I, I really, really appreciate it. It looks sweet. Uh, it goes on pretty much all the cars, and it uh, lets everybody know who we represent out here. Let's move on to the S Class. S Class, we've got the Grip Runners livery on here from the 2007 Need for Speed Pro Street. The Pepka mod just released P-E-P-E-G-A mod for Need for Speed Pro Street. Go Google that. It's really cool. It like doubles the size of the game files. The mod is like a whole separate game. It changes the story, adds tracks, adds a lot, like doubles the car list. They've got a bunch of live action, like cameo and story that goes into that. It's super, super good. I like it way better than the original game. And they upgraded the payout so like you can actually get more cars and build more stuff. It's super sick. I played that the day it dropped. The devs came by the stream and said hi. Five of the eight developers actually dropped by during my stream, asked me how I liked the mod, stuff like that. It was super cool. Uh, very small community over there, but those guys are fire. So I would really recommend you go check them out. That's where this is coming from. So we're kind of throwing some sponsorship their way because they're way cool. Sponsorship requires money. Maybe this is just a, a shout out. That's that's a better way to put it. We don't make any money over here. <laughs> that being said, let's dig into the build at S Class. Yeah, it's uh, kind of lackluster. Same place as A Plus. If you've got an Elite Platinum Driver mod, no problem, you guys. You'll dominate pub lobbies in this thing. But if you are on the low end of the spectrum and you're running bronze with your driver mod and um, you need as much help as you can get, this might not be the car for you. Skill issue. Could go either way. The engine that you're running in this build is the 6.2 liter V8, 755 brake horsepower when we start. It is the Pro silver engine for the parts you are running gold super induction you are running silver pro ECU you are running elite platinum fuel system you are running silver pro exhaust you are running elite platinum twin turbos sport bronze nitrous elite Platinum Road Suspension Silver Pro Brakes Elite Platinum Grip Tires Silver Pro Clutch Sport Bronze 5 Speed Transmission And then run the Elite Platinum Differential Slide it all the way to 80% You guys may have noticed that the car is S Plus 330 I'm going to teach you how to bring that down. Auxiliary, nitrous drift, nitrous grip. Go your handling, run the slider all the way to the left, 80% grip. Steering sensitivity, I run two clicks high, that's where I like it. I run the downforce all the way high. Traction control off, drift entry, brake tap. That's a standard. Nil set the car up, the guy's a master, he knows what's good, and I, I just love it when we do stuff like this. So. If you run the car at 75% grip, 329 right there, you're good. But 75 is not as high as 78. So let's get those extra three points. Put the car back to 80% grip. Go back to your suspension and equip the Super Gold Road Suspension. That's gonna force the slider down to 78% grip. Go back, equip the Elite Platinum Road Suspension. Now you have the Elite Platinum Road Suspension with 78% grip. It's the only way to do that. And the Corn Nut Crew is doing that wherever we need to to make the car fit and give it as much grip and as much horsepower as possible. We make the most of our points over here. I don't want to 
lose any percentage points on grip. I don't want to lose any PI points anywhere else. And I definitely am not going to trade any points for a bottle of NOS or a clutch or anything like that. Like, all about the go, not about the auxiliaries, not about the parameters of brakes and clutches and nitrous bottles. Like, get the horsepower, drive the car the way it's meant to be driven, get your boost, get your near misses, get your drafts, get all the things that come with driving good and you will never worry about nitrous. And you really shouldn't have to worry about shifting because you're at the top end all the time anyway, right guys? So that's the deal, that's the car, that's 78% grip, that's what we do out here, we optimize, we min-max the best out of anybody in the game. 197 top speed, 884 for your horsepower, 806 for your torque. Quarter mile and 0 to 60 do not matter. This car will brush 200 miles an hour on fish hook. I've got gameplay footage of that. The fish hook time is nothing special. This car is mid, mids. Like, corn nut builds mids. It can be what we cr cry out today on this stuff. It's, uh, it's a mid tier car for sure. Um, it's not bad though. You can go pub stomp. That's gonna do it for me. Stay tuned for the gameplay footage. Drop a comment down below. Tell me what you want to see me build next. I'm in for you guys. Like somebody else's comment and like the video while you're down there. You guys have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. All right. This is just a little clip on Let It Whip in A+. You guys know this is a top speed track. We're doing everything we can in this car, going 175. The guy in second place is flying. He's in a Porsche that does well into the 200. You'll see that he's just creeping down the yardage. But as all things I do when I'm getting gameplay footage, screw that guy. <laughs> oh, I'm so toxic. I love it. Uh, so we end up winning this race because of that little move. Uh, that really slows him down. I mean, it, it took us every bit of a minute and 20 seconds into the race before he finally found the legs of that car and was able to catch up. But, uh, you know, like all things, you guys, we're out here riding dirty, taking the blacklist to the streets and uh, taking the W on tracks that we probably shouldn't in this car. All right, now a real race, uh, Colossus. Very long race in this car. Like I say, guys, you're not setting any kind of times in this thing, but it's all right. It, it gets it done. And so I'm going to show you what it looks like driving around one of the longest tracks in the A+. I launched the car in third gear. That seems to be the sweet spot for it. If the RPMs drop, and as you're running out of NOS, you're right there ready to shift it to fourth. So it's pretty much perfect. Guys I'm running against, I don't know them. I don't think I've ever raced with them before. So shout out to them for taking part in the video unknowingly. I think that's pretty cool. There's random people that later would watch the video and be like, hey, that's me. <laughs> uh, regardless, we're just doing a little micro drifts, getting grip turns. I pre-shift, and then I'm trying to milk the bar here. You'll see I'm doing little twitches, and I'm tapping the brakes when I do that, so that way I can get into here and have a three bar to boost up this hill corner right there. There's another three bar with the near miss, and we'll chain that, and we will use it to get out of that corner with another grip turn. You'll see that I started chaining those together. I waited until I got in the corner to do that, and then started chaining them all. I'm trying to milk that up to the three bar. I'm gonna save it till this corner, so that way I can get around this one fast. Nice little Tron turn. Not quite as sharp as I needed to, but if you go too sharp there, you hit the inside. So we really put a good gap on the guys behind us now. We're pushing out on 200 yards. The track is pretty much ours. We don't have to worry about any desync, don't have to worry about any issues. And I know for certain the cars that we're racing against perform better in A plus than this one does. But because we used our boost, used our NOS, used our resources accordingly, we were able to put a little gap on those boys. So now we've got the three bar. I'm gonna save it for this corner down here and use it for this right turn. Here it comes. There it is. Get us up to speed, slow right down into that corner, get a little grip turn. And then I'm gonna do a little micro drift here, try to get us up to around two bars. There's a wonderful piece of traffic in the way. So we lost a little momentum there, but it doesn't matter. It's, um, we're just racing in a pub lobby. We're not trying to set any crazy times, not in this thing anyway. So using the boost halfway through the corner, so that way when it registers the grip turn, we get that as well. Two bars going into this one, a little micro drift, trying to get the third bar. I'm trying to milk it, there it is, and then use it as soon as I get it. When I'm 
at the top end of two and a half bars, I usually will try to get that third bar because it is a pretty big difference, I feel like. But for this one, we wait till we're about midway through the corner. Had to go wide instead of cut in because of that traffic. Guys, when you're driving, always be looking up the road as far as you can see so that way you can avoid traffic at all costs. It doesn't matter how fast you are, if you're hitting traffic and crashing, you're not going to be winning. The guy that runs clean will usually beat you, even if he's slower. So we go through the inside there, kind of cut through the parking lot, try to keep it on the tarmac. This car bleeds a lot of speed, you guys. There's just not a lot you can do. But that being said, man, just drive clean. Drive fast, you'll have no problems with it. It's a very easy car to drive because it's not super rowdy. It's not going to put you in an uncomfortable position where you're going so fast you don't know what to do. I mean, you've just... It's just comfy. It's a comfy little... Little Alfa Romeo. <laughs> Going into this corner, I like to be on the inside, down low. That way you can swing out if you need to. It's kind of same deal here. I go in and then cut out. That gives you the most room to avoid traffic and cut to the left if you need to. Now this is the top speed section. This is where you want to start making sure that you've got no issues going and running into traffic and just looking ahead. You don't want to have to be hitting the brakes through here because it will really screw up your time. Mind you, this car only does about 175 soaking wet, but it, it does okay. 172 is when it bounces rev limiter, and then with some redline tech, we'll do the 175, but we gotta get out of this corner first. And you'll see that it loses miles per hour just by these little shallow turns. I mean, it just doesn't have the speed on the top end. So you'll see us, we're bouncing off 173 right there, a little redline tech, 174. Going into this corner, we make a nice little sharp turn, clip the curb, get a little micro drift, get us up to speed. Now we drop into hard eight. This is one of my favorite turns in the game because there's a lot of variation here. Get a little micro drift, use our boost on exit, then it registers the grip turn. Almost three bars, I'm gonna milk that up two, three to make sure that I get it going through this section. Nice tight corner. Turn a little sharp here and cut the inside. Looking good using this boost around this corner to get back up to speed. And at this point, you guys, we are a thousand yards ahead of second place, and all we've done is run clean. Now, if you compare this time to other times I've done on this track, you will know and you will see that I am way off of pace. But that's not because we're not doing as good as we can in the car, it's just because the car doesn't hold its own in comparison to the meta vehicles that do. But that's all right. We bounced a little bit through there, got up on the curbs, that kind of threw the car into the wall. When the car's in the air, you have no ability to steer. <laughs> so it makes it a little tough. Dropping down through here, sometimes there's traffic. I like to go up on the sidewalk and make a big wide apex turn there. Had to slow down a lot, but we got our three bar, use that in fourth gear to accelerate. And now we just carry our speed through here. That's pretty much Colossus in a nutshell. We're not running anything meta. I mean, a good time on this track is like 520. <laughs> so we are every bit of 25, 30 seconds slow on that. So it's, um, it's kind of rough. But that being said, you guys, it just run clean and you will pub stomp like I am and be 2,400 yards ahead of somebody going across the finish line. All right, let's move on to the S-Class gameplay where we actually get a little more excitement. All right, power. Now this is a B-class speed track that they brought to S-class, and it is a lot of fun at S. It's a quick track. I mean, it, it, it just, it's great. It flows really well. It's one of my more favorite tracks, even though it's not very long. We get a good launch going out of there in like third, fourth gear. You can pretty much launch this car in third and then shift, or you can launch it in fourth and just use your boost. Either way, it's not bad. Now I get a little screwed up here. Car gets a little elevated as I'm trying to turn, and so we end up hitting that van. Now we get to play the catch-up game. I like the catch-up game. It's a lot of fun. I like chasing down people and passing them, so we're going to try to do that. The guy in front of us is sliding like he's trying to drift, but drift Lamborghini is like not really a thing, so, you know, whatever. At least slide's not running a drift Lamborghini, so I consider it not to be a thing. Now we've got our three bar. We're going to use it on the downhill. Get nice and tight on the right hand side. That's really where you want to live is straddling the lines right there. I was a little loose, a little wild because of the boost, but that's okay. Hit the gas station, top up our NOS. Now, I double apex this corner. 
meaning I turn two turns into one big one and just do one big shallow line through there. Barely clip that checkpoint. I've got boost. Watch this. I miss traffic, jump, and go right through that gap. It's insane. None of that was planned. I mean, I definitely wanted to turn sharp there, but I didn't know traffic was going to be there like that, and it just worked out smashingly. If that tra or traffic had been one second behind where it was at, I would have crashed into it and died. Going through here, I use my boost through the grass and through the dirt there to get up to speed, get a nice grip turn, save that for the downhill portion right here, but I lose it because I wasn't able to micro drift. But regardless, you guys, I've got a good lead on these boys, so it's no problem. With the crash and everything else, this is not a crazy time. This car doesn't set times, but I, that little turn on the left I, is what I really wanted to show you. I thought that was pretty slick. Fish hook. This will be the last race that I show you guys today. Once again, guys, this car is nothing special, but it gives you an idea how it performs. It doesn't do too bad. So let's dig into it here. We're going to launch the car in third gear if I can get up there for it. There it is. With this track, if you chain your corners together and you're using all of your boost, and as long as you're maintaining top speed and not crashing, you can do decent. So with this one, I just stay out of traffic's way, not get involved too much, do a long turn here. This is going to give me a grip turn. I'm going to use the boost here, get another grip turn, use that in this corner. Chain that corner, grip turn, boost through it, cool. Now we're using all of our resources to get up to speed. We want to get on the top end of this car, which is about 197, 198. With Redline Tech, like I said, at the end, you'll see me hit almost 200, but real talk, 197 is what you're going to bounce with here. Going through that section, just pick a line that's comfortable and do the best you can to avoid traffic. I micro drift in right here, go a little wide, get on the grass, use the boost to bring me back. We actually shaved a lot of speed. We lost about 40 mile an hour there, which kind of sucks. And then going on the grass there didn't help us, but it's all good. Top up our NOS. I mean, we're not even in contention for anybody passing us, so it's just a matter of not crashing at this point. Getting my oncoming near misses, trying to top up that tank as much as I can because I want to carry that boost in here. Do a little turn, a little bit of a Tron turn, nothing crazy. It slides, hit the inside wall. Had I not hit the inside wall, we would have carried a lot of speed through there and that would have been fine. But because we hit that section so clean, you'll see that we are really starting to gap our opponents. That uh, yard counter is just going up lots. Now, I start to chain my grip turns here, and I start to build up boost for the tighter corners towards the bottom of this. So you'll see me start to do that. As soon as I get this corner going, I do a little micro drift here, and then get a grip turn here. Use all of our resources, because I'm still grip turning. Now I've got two bars, almost. I'm sitting here twitching a little bit, trying to get it up to three. And then I micro drift, and as soon as I hit that third bar, boom, use it on the way out which is gonna give me another grip turn at the exit of this corner. And we use that to get back up to speed. So just chaining those corners together, getting that boost, using it and getting it as much as we can allows us to really put a gap on everybody we're racing against. You'll see 199 right there, 200, 199, 200. So the car will do 200 if you're really careful, but 197 is kind of that sweet spot for it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.